In today's video, we'll practice our watercolor together by painting some of our favorite spring items. Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together no matter your skill level and it's fun, not scary. Today I have another watercolor tutorial to share with you. This is a fun little exercise where we paint familiar items. It's something I do all the time and I think you'll really enjoy painting along. Before we get to painting though, I wanted to share something personal and still artsy of course. And that is that I am wearing a sweater that I knit myself. And the reason I wanted to share that with you was to let you know that I, I often see comments where uh, you're saying stuff like, I watched this and I was sure I could do it and then I went to do it and my hands were like, mm, no. <laughs> and I totally get it, I'm so with you. I get it, I get it when it comes to painting, but I really get it when it comes to other things that I am just learning about, and knitting is one of those uh, hobbies. I always watch these YouTube videos and I'm like, oh, that looks so easy. And then I go to do it and it's like, no, that's a knot, that's just a mess. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that, you know, if you're getting started with painting or drawing or journaling or knitting, and you're feeling discouraged, please don't feel too bad about yourself or your skill level. With knitting, I have been working on it for five years and it took me five years to finally get to the point where I could knit a sweater, which was like my goal when I started back in 2015. That is seven years, that is not five years. I just wanted to pop in and say keep with it, stick with it, whatever your creative pursuit is. Let's start painting. I won't bore you with my gray, my warm gray sweater any longer. We're gonna do a spring theme for our watercolor painting today. Let's talk supplies really quick. I'm working in my Strathmore watercolor sketchbook. I have a set of watercolor paints, two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush, and I've got a couple of round paint brushes. All supplies are linked in the description, of course. Um, this is just some scrap paper I'm going to start on, but it is the same Strathmore cold pressed paper. And the first spring item we'll paint together is a robin's egg. So using a light blue on the tip of our brush, we're just going to kind of sketch out a little egg shape. And then this is great wet into wet practice. We're gonna use a nice light paint and just go around the perimeter of the egg and kind of blend and bleed that light blue out, leaving a highlight in the upper corner. And you can add a little bit more blue into the wet area and just see what happens. Then we need to let that dry. So let's move on to our next subject, which is going to be a little spring pussy willow. So I've got a bit of light, light, light French gray here, and I'm just kind of working out some tiny oval shapes, leaving a little bit of page showing through. I want these to look very, very light gray, almost white. When you're done with those shapes, pick up a little bit of dark brown, this is Van Dyke Brown, on the end of your brush and we'll join them all together with this perfectly imperfect line for the uh, stem or branches. And we're kind of framing each little pussy willow blossom with that dark brown, adding some extra little stems. Make it messy, make it very loose and organic because it is an organic shape. By the time you've done that branch, the uh, blossoms have probably dried. So we'll pick up a slightly darker French gray. Could just be paint with less water mixed in, or it could be the gray with a little bit of brown or black mixed into it. And I've just got it on the end of my brush and we're doing all these tiny, tiny little lines and making our um, Pussy Willow look even more sort of fuzzy than it already did. So building up color with that wet on dry, it allows us to be very, very precise and if you want to add a little more to the pussy willow at this point, go ahead and add more blossoms. Okay, back to our egg, which has dried now. I want to build up a little more color. So this again is a mix of light blue and French gray, but it's a little more concentrated. There's a little less water in there. And I'm adding low lights to the area of the egg that is opposite where that highlight sits. And I kind of put some dark paint on there and then I come back in with a damp 
clean brush and I blend it all out, muss it up a little bit. And once again, I'll leave it alone to dry. And that's the nice thing when you're working on two subjects is that you can go back and forth working wet on dry when each subject is dry. And here I'm just adding those tiny little gray lines to my pussy willow, making sure it really looks fluffy. Next thing we're going to paint together is a cute little watering can filled with daisies. I'm filming this in January and it feels great to paint all these spring items. Spring is a long way off for me, but that's okay. Uh, to paint the watering can, I like to sketch it out first, starting with the middle section, uh, add a little handle on one side, spout on the other. You do a little oval um, for the top of that spout there. It's a fairly straightforward shape. Get rid of some of those pencils markings and then you can use any color for your watering can. I chose a nice dark hunter green. This is just my favorite of greens, deep fallow green. And I am making sure that the paint is a little darker around the perimeter of the body of the can, kind of again leaving a highlight like I did on the egg. Um, I'm making the spout a much lighter green so that I can add a low light later on. And we'll leave that alone. Don't worry too much about low lights and highlights, just fill it in. We can always add more later, keep it light. What we're going to do now is grab some nice yellow, maybe a raw sienna like I've got here, and we'll do a bunch of circles or little ovals. These are gonna be all the um, centers of our daisies, so keep them spread out a little bit. And then we're using just a simple gray, little French gray, maybe with a bit of white mixed in. And we're going to go and round each stamen and add all these petals, these tiny little petals. And they do not have to be perfect. They don't all have to be the same. These should be messy. We're just, remember, this is an exercise where we're just painting some of our favorite spring items. So don't worry too much about getting everything looking so perfect. It's just supposed to be a practice exercise. I know sometimes that is hard to keep in mind as we're painting but I'm just kind of drawing in a bunch of petals with my gray paint. And then I take a darker gray. Remember, it could be more concentrated, so less water in the gray, or it could be gray mixed with black. And we're just adding some shading near the center of each flower. Next, we wanna make these white flowers pop off the white paper by adding some uh, dark green leaves, framing them. Now I've done a, a hunter green watering can, so I wanna make sure to use a different color of green here, and I'm using a bit of olive green, just a really earthy color. So I added a bunch of tiny little leaves, framing my white daisies, and then of course I need to paint the top of that watering can. I had kinda left it blank before. I'm adding much darker green and using a damp clean brush to blend everything together, make it look, um, you know, just a bit more uniform, add some more low lights, and then we're gonna leave that alone. Once again, we're gonna come over to our previous subject and work a little wet on dry. We can be very precise now. So taking a black brown, a very dark brown, I'm adding speckles to my egg. I wait for the watering can to dry, and then I can add just a few dark green spots here um, to make the, the holes of the spout. Next up, let's paint a tulip together. Wouldn't be spring without a tulip. Go ahead and grab some pink or peach. I'm using um, a little bit of Jaune Brilliant mixed with red. And we are going to paint, there's no other way to say it, a tulip shape. It's that oval that flares out slightly towards the top. And you can see here, I've taken a darker pink on each side, left a little highlight in the middle. I'm letting the paint get a little lighter towards the top of the tulip and kind of work a little wet into wet there and play. Then I, kind of hint at two other petals, one on each side. So just kind of paint a line on each side and a little hint of a petal in behind. While that is drying, we're going to mix up some green. This is sap green mixed with olive brown. And I'm just painting a curving stem, it kind of blends. That green blends with the pink nicely towards the top there. And then one big, rounded, smooth leaf. And you see that beautiful, bright sap green. It's a great spring color. Um, 
and we'll, we'll let that leaf come to a little bit of a point, maybe add a darker green under the blossom or maybe add a little bit of darker green to portions of the leaf. This is where that wet into wet works so nicely because if you add a darker color, it'll, it'll move and blend a little. And then the blossom should have dried by now. So we can take a slightly darker pink and add some low lights. And I'm keeping it a little bit darker towards the bottom. So the sun maybe is coming from up overhead. So it's going to be a little darker in the center because the tulip is concave. It's going to be a little darker towards the stem because it is round and three dimensional and it exists in the three dimensional world. These are all things you can play around with. You don't have to get them all on the first try. And we'll add that vein to the center of that main petal as well. So this is when our tulip starts to come to life. We're working a little wet on dry. We can be very precise. Uh, we can add a darker green to one side of the stem or to the base of the leaf or um, to right underneath the flower and even add a line or two in the center of that leaf. And that tulip I think is looking pretty good. I did choose to add just a few brown dots to indicate the stamen in the center of that concave cave flower and then I was all done. And the last thing I want to paint together is like a silly, very easy, cute little robin. So for our easy, easy robin, grab some medium brown. This is red brown and we are going to paint. It's sort of like a tadpole shape. Think of painting a tadpole, this oval that comes to kind of a long tail point at one side. Then wash, rinse that brush and pick up red for the belly. Grab a nice uh, bright red and we're going to add to our tadpole, bringing that belly out and around and down. And then finally, we'll rinse the brush again, grab a little bit of light gray, and we're just kind of finishing off his belly with a, with a creamy gray. Could have some white in it, add it to his tail slightly if you want to. Then that'll dry quite quickly. And after it does, we're gonna work a little bit of wet on dry so we can be very precise now. And we can do funny little things like adding details to his wing or putting some lines on his tail. We just did a bird painting together on the channel on Friday and it's a slightly more detailed bird, not quite as silly as this one. So I will link that tutorial as well. And we go much more in depth about painting a sweet little spring bird. So definitely check that out if you're like, whoa, you're going fast or I want more details. But you just add to his red belly, put a little more brown on his, um, on his wing and his tail. And that's it for the robin. He's got a cute eye and a beak and he couldn't be more simplistic. Well friends, that's it. My cute little spring items are all done. We've painted a watering can, a pussy willow, robin's egg, tulip, and even a cute little bird. And I thought it would be fun to just cut them out. This was just a fun way for me to finish off the project, which I did kind of on random sketchbook pages and on scrap paper. And I think they look so sweet with that little white border. And now I can like glue them in my journal or something. I don't know. I hope you've painted along with me or that you're thinking of spring items that you would like to practice your watercolor skills with. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.